Our last speaker is Mr. Samuel Tan. Uh, The last speaker is Samuel Tan, who recently retired from the position of the Chief Representative to China from DOE, Department of Energy of United States of America. I will ask him questions related to energy policies of USA. Even his PowerPoint presentation is uh, mainly talking about uh, using MSW, municipal solid waste, to make hydrogen, which is his new business. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Samuel to deliver his speech. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here to discuss this very important subject matter with you, hydrogen economy. This afternoon, I will share with you the current status on hydrogen production and some of the US government effort on advocating the expansion of the hydrogen economy as part of their plan to mitigate the climate change then I would like to talk about a disruptive waste to hydrogen technology that would help to accelerate the pathway to a hydrogen economy. So will you give me the next slide, please? Okay. So the outline of my presentation today is to talk a little bit about the new company I'm working for, if you leave me a background. And then I want to talk about the different pathway to clean and green hydrogen. Then I will give you some uh, status report on the US approach to produce uh, green hydrogen. And, and then the last pathway I want to talk about is the waste to hydrogen and also the potential impact. So after I have spent almost 45 years uh, working for three large global private industrial companies and then finally spent 10 years with uh, the federal government uh, in the United States, I have decided to join a small startup company just for the excitement. <laughs> and, uh, and this company is in Hong Kong called Enterways Asia Pacific Limited. It is part of a urban gateway family. And urban gateway is a private equity uh, platform established about two years ago in Hong Kong. Its mission is to identify the de-risk urban technology that have significant impacts in the development of clean urban centers. Some of the areas are energy efficiency, power grid management, and climate change, such as carbon dioxide emission and hydrogen economy. The team member of the Urban Gateway has been very successful in funding small to medium-sized enterprise in the West. And they want to bring this successful business model to the Asia. So far, they have made significant progress in the first three climate action driven companies. Enter Cool, Enter Cow, and Enter Prop. Under this platform, even though 
the COVID-19 environment make it very difficult for them to execute their plan. However, today's my presentation is going to be focused on anti-waste. And the waste mission is to help city to decarbonize through the application of low carbon and low risk technology. Our first focus is on how to manage the domestic waste such as MSW in a sustainable and environmental, environmentally acceptable manner. Besides lowering the carbon footprint for the local city, and the way also try to optimize the waste management scheme so that our project will also enhance the local economy. Let me give you an example. For the last 30 years, MSW in China is either landfilled or incinerated. And China is running out of land to do landfill near the big city. Incineration of MSW is simply transferring the solid disposal problem to an air pollution problem. Even though small amount of electricity is generated from the incinerator, but it is put into the power grid. It does not benefit the local economy. So anyways approach is very simple. Solve the local problem and also help the local economy. So let's talk about hydrogen. Everyone who is, who is here today probably know more about hydrogen than I am. So I don't have to convince you that green hydrogen is important and it is necessary for dealing with the climate change. And hydrogen is such a dynamic field that can be used across all industries and sectors to lower carbon intensity but where can we find this inexpensive and sustainable clean hydrogen? Obviously, electrolysis of water is a, is a uh, first that comes to your mind. However, there are pros and cons in this approach, and we will talk about that later. And today, Thermal conversion, such as a steam methane reformer, gasification of fossil feedstocks with carbon capture, utilization, and storage, seems to be the near term opportunity to produce clean hydrogen, what Thomas said, blue hydrogen. This pathway can only turn the gray hydrogen into blue. It won't give us the green hydrogen. So the, the waste coupled with biomass is a very attractive pathway. However, the feedstock supply is not very good for biomass, but MSW is a very good a fish stock because we create and produce more and more waste every day. However, with incineration, it's not a good idea. Where is the perfect solution? We will spend some time to talk about that. This is a, um, a slide presented by NETL DOE about a couple of months ago in the US. Um, this is the table, part of a, a big report that is now under peer review. And 
the report will be published as soon as it has gone through the peer review and it will be available to the public in the DOE website. And as you can see that, five or six different approach were used here to produce clean hydrogen. And I want to caution you that the cost shown here is based on the US Gulf Coast uh, basis, okay? And uh, on the right-hand side, it also show you the carbon intensity of this different method. And without going into the detail of this uh, tape, uh, this slide, what I really want to point out is that the only option that might give you a negative or low carbon intensity is the one related with biomass and CCS. So DOE understand the status and the cost involved, and they want to lower the cost of hydrogen production in order to support the hydrogen economy. So a couple months ago, they launched a, what they call the hydrogen shot uh, program. The idea is that they want to set a goal in, in 10 years, in one decade, they want to lower the hydrogen cost, production cost to $1 per one kilogram of clean hydrogen. This is a very ambitious goal. However, I think they have a good chance to get, get to that uh, uh, low cost goal, 111, because about 10 years ago, DOE had a similar program. In 2010, they set a goal to lower the solar energy from $5.7 per watt to $1 per watt in 10 years. And they achieved that goal in 2007, okay? So, but the point here is that, so what would they achieve the goal? What impact it might have on the hydrogen economy? Is it gonna be sufficient to help fight the climate change? The answer is no, because inexpensive green hydrogen is only one of the variable in the equation. We need more than that in order to fight climate change. So the second option is to look at electrolysis. And DOE has laid out a very comprehensive plan how to lower the cost of electricity, uh, hydrogen from electrolysis. And they are looking to get the cost down to $1 per kilogram by 2030 by reducing capital costs, lower fixed costs, and also lower electricity costs. And Again, achieving this technological goal and reaching at $1 per kilogram hydrogen may not save us because in order for electrolysis to work and electrolysis, electrolysis to produce green hydrogen, you need green electricity. And the current US policy does not have a very really clear mandate on how to 
assure there will be sufficient renewable energy to drive all this uh, electrolysis. And then there is something really uh, unique in this round of the DOE program is that they include thermal conversion with CCUS in their program. As you recall, the Energy Policy Act in 2005 intentionally exclude fossil energy from the hydrogen program. However, this time around, the, policy, the proposed policy said that they should try every available technology in order to reach the goal, which is net zero carbon emission by 2050. So many of you are very familiar with thermal conversion, which is steam methane reformer, gasification of coal, biomass, MSW. Okay, and then the CO2 is being captured and stored or secretated in a reservoir. The, the point I want to make here is that in order to produce all this hydrogen that we need to reach the net zero carbon emission goal, according to IEA study, it said that we have to build one largest solar farm we have today every day for the next 10 years in order to produce enough green hydrogen uh, to support the program and to reach the goal. And we all know that it is not possible and we are not doing it today. So I believe that 10 years from now, we will be working with a technology that we do not know anything about today. There will be disruptive technology come on that we have never heard about, and it is going to save the day by producing inexpensive, sustainable green hydrogen. And one of the disruptive technology that we have found in and the waste is the Omni gasification and plasma refining system. And I will explain to you a little bit more about the name. It is not as scary as it sounds. But first of all, I want to point out to you that this technology can handle a variety of different ways Okay, and they can produce a very clean syn gas that does not have any tar, char, or oil, or not even have any toxic chemicals in it. So, and one good thing about this is it is economical because the operating condition and the design of this system. Here is a, uh, a, a graphic to show you. On the left-hand side is the gasification and plasma refining section, what we call GPRS. And This particular unit, GPRS, has been 
operated in Ottawa, Canada for more than eight years at the capacity of about 130 tons MSW per day. So there were a lot of uh, design question and uh, operating issue. They were resolved in those eight years. And the same gas that come out from the unit go into the middle section of the graph, which consists of very conventional chemical processes to convert syn gas into hydrogen. Okay, what I'm showing here to you is a example of 200 tons per day MSW will be able to produce enough hydrogen to support 350 buses in any city. And also on the upper right-hand corner, uh, there is a, a carbon balance to show you that with the credit, offsetting credit from avoidance of landfill, plus the credit of biogenic material in the MSW, you can produce a hydrogen with a negative carbon intensity minus 3.3 kilogram CO2 equivalent per kilogram of hydrogen. I don't want to make a point here why this technology is so disruptive is that we all know that most of the MSW is being processed in full diabet gasifier. As, and the feed, the MSW has to be prepared very carefully in order to, to get it into the full diabet gasifier. And it is very costly to do that. However, look at the picture on the left-hand side. This is the type of MSW that we put it into the Omni gasifier. We only have to remove the metal, concrete, glasses, and then cut the pieces into something about 100 millimeter size then we can put it into the gasifier. So really minimum preparation. And the design of the gasifier is in such a way, the operating condition is very mild. So the capital cost of the gasifier is very low compared to the conventional gasifiers such as General Electric, Shell, semen or any full diabet gasifier. So this is the final slide. I just want to show you some of the feature in this uh, disruptive gasifier and why it is going to help us to manage MSW by producing hydrogen. As I said that earlier, this technology will allow us to solve a local waste problem. And then it produced one is there's no ash, it produced a solid, which is virtified into only rock that you can use it for construction or for other civil work. And then the hydrogen we produce, we'll use for local buses. And what that means is that it will provide tax revenue for the local government and also help to stimulate the local economy. We are not exporting anything from the domestic centers.
So before I conclude my presentation, I just want to show you a, a, a graphic, kind of like a cartoon that most of you probably already know about, that once you can make and produce clean scene gas, you will have green hydrogen or green scene gas to produce all these green products and application. Okay. And for the people who like chemistry and want to know about the chemical reaction and how, how the uh, scene gas is being used to make all this product, this is the slide for you. Okay, so to conclude my talk, I just want to borrow a, uh, a quote from the Hydrogen Council, a roadmap showing that the impact of the hydrogen economy by 2050. I think Thomas also mentioned that in his presentation. But the message I want to bring to you is that if we can develop this hydrogen ecosystem, produce clean, economical, green hydrogen, we will be able to see that all over the country. They will be developed and built around large scale user, just such as seaport, refinery, fertilizer, steel, and power. So that is the reason green hydrogen has a huge impact on the future economy of the world. Thank you for your attention. Samuel, I still have to uh, keep you for a while before you go to sleep. I believe you are one o'clock now in the morning. Well, are you midnight sleep. or? It's two o'clock in the morning. Okay. Now I keep you for a little while uh, with my two questions. The first question is the Joe Biden administration also commits to achieving net zero carbon emissions by 2050. What is his policy on hydrogen economy in reaching this goal? He has a proposed policy. It is still has to be approved by Congress. And I'm, unfortunately, this conference is about one or two weeks too early. We are hoping that before he goes to a COP26, the Congress would have come to a compromise. But I can share with you some of the, the feature in the proposed policy, okay? Like I said earlier, the original energy policy act in 2005 aims at producing green hydrogen from biomass and ignoring coal, fossil energy, and any other option. However, this time around, there are a lot of changes. They basically adopt the approach is that you use everything to fight climate change, to reduce carbon emission. So that means that coal, CCUS, natural gas, they all fair game, okay? And however, they did propose that a definition of clean hydrogen in the, in the bill, they would define clean energy, clean hydrogen as the one that only admit two kilogram CO2 equivalent per kilogram of hydrogen. Otherwise you are not clean hydrogen. But again, this is the proposed number. And I'm, I'm sure my experience in the government is that they will all change in the last minute, okay? And also what is interesting to this is in the old day, 
they only look at hydrogen for power generation. But in this round of the proposed policy, they are going to include steel and cement plant in the program. So they would have goal and policy set up to help to promote the use of hydrogen, a green hydrogen in steel and cement. So there are a lot of changes uh, in there. I think it's very positive, uh, but I don't know what the final policy is going to be like. Uh, as you know, that there are two Democratic senators I keep proposing uh, different uh, level of support on the legislation. So we just have to cross our finger and see what happens in the next two weeks. My second question is hydrogen economy is just like a three leg stool. Green power resources, green hydrogen production technologies, and green hydrogen users. How will US energy policies address these three areas? Not very well. Uh, we are doing a very good job in lowering the production cost of green hydrogen. We have a very specific, a very strong program. I really believe that the 111 program will be successful. We will be able to lower the cost. But like uh, Hazel mentioned about in the China, there are too many electric vehicles uh, already running around. So there are not enough fuel cell vehicle to take advantage of the green hydrogen. And in the US, we are not really promoting fuel cell vehicle that, that well. So I'm concerned about that. Uh, in terms of resources, uh, I'm not concerned about that because we have a lot of waste. We have tire, we have plastic, we do not recycle plastic in the US. We throw them into the, the landfill, okay? So we got plenty of waste. And there are already a couple ways to jet fuel and diesel plant uh, under construction in the US right now. So, um, uh, so but, the only, but one of the things that could save us is CCUS because we had a very comprehensive or I should say extensive infrastructure on CO2 pipeline. And our geological formation is very good for enhanced oil recovery. So we can use the CO2 uh, and, and get some value out of it. Also, we can use the reservoir to store CO2. So we are much in a much better position than the rest of the world in doing CCUS. So that may save us on not having a perfect Felix stool that you talk about. Okay, Sam, thank you so much. Any other question from the floor? If none, thank you so much for coming. Your, your background is Grand Canyon, huh? not San Francisco. <laughs> it's Grand Canyon, right? That was the last place right. I went for vacation. Okay. Goodbye. Bye-bye.